What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Flying with Garrett. At least I think that's what I'm going to call it for now, but I hope everyone enjoyed episode one of this new series that I'm doing. Um, I'll give you guys just another real quick update on captain upgrade training since I figured most people that are coming to this are interested in aviation. So I just got really good news that uh, my check ride, my final PIC type rating check ride is next Wednesday, so that's a week from today. And I'm super excited. This has been such a long drawn out process, way longer than it really needed to be, but we ran into some issues and like had a week off here and a week off there. And yeah, I'm just super excited to knock it out. So I'm actually going into a simulator tonight. I've got loft one of four. So loft is line oriented flight training. Essentially all we do is just, it's like a normal flight, I guess. We would go from Philadelphia to, I don't know, Charlotte, North Carolina. And we just go through the normal procedures of, you know, loading passengers and doing weight and balance and cargo loading and going through the release and flight plan and then just pushing off the gate, taxiing out to the runway and taking off just like a, a normal flight. And then they normally do have about like one, maybe two minor instances just to see what kind of captain authority you would use, whether you need to divert or just what kind of procedures you would use. So I've got loft one tonight and then three more after that. And then a couple days off and then my final check ride. And then I'll have about two to three weeks off before I'm actually flying in the left seat of the airplane as the captain, which I'm super, super excited about. But anyways, to the topic of today's video, this is probably the most requested thing I get. It is different pathways to becoming an airline pilot. Um, and this, I, I, I can't, you know, really speak for any pathway outside the United States just because I'm not real familiar with the policies and the flight time and costs and stuff. So I've done a little research and then I'm going to speak from my experience and what I did. So I'll just start off what I did and how I became an airline pilot. So what I did, I was in college for actually a business management degree. I was 18 years old and I got a job at an airport next to my college just working on the line as uh, we call it a line boy. So I was fueling airplanes, washing airplanes, doing stuff like that. And then I called my dad who is an airline pilot, but he never really pushed it upon me to like, I don't know, be a pilot or anything. So I've always been interested in airplanes, but I never really was like that kid that was always staring up at the sky saying, oh, that's what I want to do with my life. But I called my dad and said, hey, I, you know, this is pretty cool working around airplanes. I think I might want to fly. So I did this thing called discovery flight. So you jump in the airplane with an instructor. They do everything. You get up at altitude and then you get to, I don't know, fly the airplane a little bit. And I was like, this is pretty awesome. I kind of like this. So I decided to get my private pilot's license and I soloed at about 12 hours which means I took the airplane out by myself and I did three touch and goes all by myself, no instructor. So about 12 hours in the airplane, I was soloing. And then right at the private pilot minimums, uh, at 40 hours, I took my private pilot check ride. So at 40 hours and I kind of drugged my butt, I wasn't really hustling or anything. And about, I don't know, eight months later, I had my private pilot's license. I was like, this is pretty, this is pretty sweet flying an airplane. I kind of want to pursue this as a career. So me and my dad did some research and I decided to transfer colleges and I went down to Embry-Riddle in Daytona Beach. So Embry-Riddle is an aeronautical university. It's primarily flight training, but they do have uh, big, you know, aerospace engineering degrees and stuff like that. So. I went down to Embry-Riddle and I got my instrument rating, my commercial single and commercial multi rating. And uh, then I decided to become a flight instructor. So there are many, many different ways of building flight time, but I thought it was best. And just by asking around and you know reading on the internet and stuff, I figured that flight instructor was probably the best way to build my flight time. So I went down just a, just a few minutes south of Daytona Beach to um, New Smyrna Beach, where I became a flight instructor. I got my CFI, which is Certified Flight Instructor Rating, and CFII, which is the same thing with an instrument rating. So at this point, I was teaching people how to fly. I was teaching private pilots, commercial pilots, 
uh, instrument pilots and then after a certain amount of time I was actually teaching other instructors how to fly so I was a CFI teaching other CFIs and uh, it was awesome uh, I busted my absolute butt to build flight time because at that point I knew that seniority is everything I mean that's all my dad has told me that's why everyone says seniority is everything in this industry so Every day that I was going by that I wasn't at the airlines, more people were getting hired ahead of me. And so I, I, I really kind of gave a lot of my orals away to other flight instructors. And I was flying every day, four to five flights a day. And then I bought a Cessna 150. And me and my buddy after flight instructing, who was also a flight instructor, every day we would jump in it and fly like New Smyrna Beach to Tampa and back. So I was, I was maximizing my flight time. I was trying to fly minimum five, six hours a day. So after flight instructing and building flight time and picking up any other jobs I could, like I went up to Martha's Vineyard and flew an airplane all the way down, down to New Smyrna Beach. I was just picking up airplanes left and right and anything that I could do to build flight time is what I did. So, um, we have a restricted ATP minimums in the United States, and then we also have the full AT, uh, ATP minimums. So full ATP minimums is, I believe, 50 hours of multi-engine and 1,500 hours of total time. So since I went to Embry-Riddle and did at least, I believe it was 60 credit hours, and there's a few other minor things, and also got my in instrument and commercial while I was at Embry-Riddle, which is a part 141 school, I was eligible for the restricted minimum. So all I needed was a thousand hours of total time and I could go to the airlines. So, um, like I said, I busted my butt, built as much flight time as quick as possible and eight months later after becoming a CFI, I was in ground school at, uh, at the airline I work for now. So um, that was that's my story, that's the way I did it. Um, if I were to go back and do it all again, I would probably change one big thing, and that was the college I went to, just primarily because of how much time it took and just the cost. I mean, it's probably one of the most, it is the most expensive flight school out there. And uh, I'm gonna go through a couple other ways, and then I'm gonna tell you probably if I were to go do it again, which way I would go. So, um, there is, you can, you can go out to any airport, really, and there's gonna be instructors there, and there's gonna be airplanes to rent. So to get, to get everything started, to get your private pilot's license, you're gonna spend eight to $10,000 if you were to not go to a university. And that includes airplane rental, instructor fees, you, you got to buy books for ground school. You got to pay for ground school. Um, your ATP or not uh, ATP, but your FA written exam for private pilot's license. You probably got to get a headset, insurance, a lot of these different things. And uh, yeah, so you're gonna spend about eight to ten thousand dollars on your private pilot's license. And like I said, you can go to pretty much a local airport, and they're gonna have these things there for you. But if I were to go back and do it there's this thing called ATP here in the United States which is a flight school there's 30 uh, yeah there's 37 of them across the United States and what ATP is is they specialize in flight training essentially people coming in from zero hours so no one that's ever touched the airplane up to ready to go to the airlines and they have uh, I don't work with this company. I, I never work at this flight school or anything, but if I were to go back and, and do it all over again, I would probably go to this ATP flight school. And the reason is, is there's a couple reasons. A, um, most people that go to like the university that I went to, if they, I saved so much money, thankfully, by taking my private pilot's license into the university versus getting everything there. But there's some people that come out of that university in $200,000 in debt. Thankfully, uh, I wasn't nearly as much as that, but that's people who, who pursue a, the aviation 
career they think that Embry Riddle or some of these top like uh, Auburn, some big flight schools here in the United States are where you have to go. But if I were to go and do it again, I would go to ATP. So if you just type in on the internet ATP flight school, um, you can go, they have a thing called flight training uh, timeline, zero experience to airline pilot in about two years. And keep in mind, I went to college for four years. So I was in college for four years and wasting so much money, uh, you know, over $100,000. So it takes, I'll, I'll break down their timeline. This is from zero time. Uh, private pilot is about three months. Then five and a half months later, instrument rating, six months, crew style cross country. So I believe what that is, is it's two people that are both in this phase. They jump in an airplane and they just fly all day building their flight time. And then six and a half months later, you're a commercial pilot. Eight and a half months later, you're a certified flight instructor. Then you do your multi-engine add-on, which is about nine months. And then if you start from zero experience with this ATP flight school, they guarantee you a, a uh, flight instructor job, which is pretty, pretty cool. And then there are a few airlines that this company works with uh, for tuition reimbursement, which I think is a pretty cool program. Um, if you go and sign a contract with one of these regional carriers saying that you will go and work for them, they will give you, I believe it's $5 an hour of flight training back to your tuition that you spent. And then they have a airline placement program. So at, that's at 1500 hours. So this isn't a part 141 school where you can go and get restricted ATP minimums. But I, I think this school is probably the, the fastest and one of the most cost efficient ways of building your flight time and getting to the airlines as quick as possible. Um, I, I, I think that you can beat the, I, in fact, I know you can beat the two years of, of zero experience to an airline pilot because this is, it, it's a pretty lenient from nine months to two years is what they're saying of building your flight time. I did it in eight months. Yes, I was just going to a thousand hours, but there's no reason why you shouldn't be flying a hundred hours a month as a flight instructor, just picking up as much work as possible or doing any sort of side gigs. So, uh, the cost of this program is right. It's $80,000. So like I said, I don't work with this company, but if I were to go do it again, um, this is what I would do. And, and a big, big reason is time, times are changing every day i mean if you are just in the loop with uh regional carriers and stuff their pilot contracts are getting updated yearly because of the pilot shortage and they have to stay in competition with each other if one pay raise goes up to 65 dollars an hour um first year pay for a first officer with a twenty five thousand dollar signing bonus and you know someone's fifteen dollars an hour less than that well no one's going to go to the fifteen dollar less airline so everyone just keeps one up against each other, which is great for pilots. It's, it's excellent. It couldn't be a better time in this, in this industry to be a pilot. So, um, like I said, I, I would do this because my four year degree, my bachelor's degree in aeronautical science that's spent over a hundred thousand dollars getting really means nothing now these days. Um, it's a sweet degree. I, I love the school I went to, but if, if I were to go do it again, I wouldn't do it because these regional carriers, they don't require, require uh, bachelor degrees, four-year degrees, um, or some of them don't require two-year degrees. So this is why I would say save your time going to college. And this is just my perspective. I'm not saying don't go to college. I'm just saying if I were to go do it again, I wouldn't go to school. I'd bust my butt getting all my ratings. At 21 years old, I would be at the airlines. So um, there, there's, I pulled up the flight school that I worked for at um, in New Smyrna Beach, and they have a professional airline pilot program. So this is tuition and hours, and the grand total. So ATP was eighty thousand dollars. This grand total is $66,000 and this doesn't include, oh, it does include um, your written exams and stuff like that. So um, yeah, you can compare those. And 
there's so many different options and this also includes fly, uh, CFI and something that would probably, I did my CFI and CFII which were about $4,000 and $5,000. So you could save another $9,000 if you decided to go another route after getting your commercial single and commercial multi. So a couple other routes that you could do to get to that 1500 hours of flight time is pipeline flying. Um, and what this is, is, is some of these companies have uh, security in the air and you're jumping in a little Cessna 150 or 172 or something and flying up and down a pipeline all day long. And yes, you're building flight time, but you're really not learning anything. You're not, you're not flying in instrument com, uh, conditions. So since the last time you were doing your flight training, you haven't really been flying an IMC. So you're getting rusty and you're getting weak on your instrument skills, which you're definitely going to use in the airline industry. Um, and you're really not staying sharp on all your materials from your flight training. So that's why I believe being a CFI is super important because you're, if you can teach it to someone, you definitely know it. So, and that's what you're doing, building your whole flight time is you're teaching, you're teaching, you're teaching. And I, I just, I, I think, I know from my perspective, because I do some recruiting for the airline that I work for, um, if in my eyes, I, I feel like certified flight instructors are tend to be a little bit more sharp when it comes to just knowledge and aerodynamics and instrument knowledge. And that's something that if you aren't sharp on it, when you do come in to do that airline transition, it's going to be tough because you're going to be struggling. You're going to be knocking all that rust off. So um, that's, that's the reason why I did the CFI route. And if I were to go back and do it again, I would still become a flight instructor. So you have uh, a pipeline patrol, you have banner towing, which if you go to the beach and you see the airplane fly, airplane flying back and forth with the banner on the back, most likely it's someone just building flight time. Uh, most people don't make careers out of banner towing. So they're just up there doing about 50 knots over the water back and forth, back and forth all day. It's a great way to build flight time because you're up there for about six hours a day, but like I said, you're not staying sharp on your knowledge. So you got pipeline patrol, you've got banner towing, and you've got survey work. So um, I, I almost considered doing the survey work and, and looking back at it, I'm glad that I stuck with the route that I did, but survey work, um, any type of construction or yeah, just big, big construction pro projects, there's always uh, airplanes going up there and taking pictures for the companies, for the cities, for w whatever. There's tons of surveying jobs out there and tons of surveying companies out there. Like I said, all this stuff you can find on Google if you just type in surveying pilot jobs or whatever. Um, there's tons of them out there. And like I said, you're just, you're flying in VMC, you're flying in, in beautiful clear days all the time. So you're not really flying through clouds and, and staying sharp and up to date on your instrument skills. Um, and then, and then you have cargo work. So cargo work is probably the one second to being a flight instructor that I would suggest. Uh, you can go out in about 400 hours, you can get some jobs flying Cessna Grand Caravans, which are 208 B's. And uh, you go out and just and, and fly with cargo companies. And these smaller companies that are flying Cessna Grand Caravans tend to feed, they go to really small airports and they tend to feed the big hubs for like FedEx and UPS and stuff like that. So um, those are those are my ways that I, I found best of, of building flight time. Um, like I said, if I were to go do it again and do your research, please, please, please do your research. Don't take my word for everything. But a lot of these regional carriers don't require, uh, you know, bachelor degrees. So if I were to go back and do it again, I would go to a school like like ATP and and start from zero bust my butt. Yes, you're there all day, every day because you're in ground school, you're doing multiple flights a day, you're studying, but it's, it's to get to your, your career and, and doing this two year program, you get there essentially at least two years quicker than someone who went and did a four year degree and was flight instructing after that building time. So, 
Um, yeah, that, that's, that's all I got on pathways to become an airline pilot here in the United States to get your ATP rating. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you're enjoying this, this series that I'm doing, if you want to maybe see me post more than once a week, let me know. Comment below. If you're new here, subscribe. Go check out my Instagram. I'm on there every day. It's the same as my YouTube channel, Fly With Garrett. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week.